No Muslim can deny the importance of Muhammad's night journey, because this flight determined the Islamic rituals of praying five times a day and performing ablution or washing before prayer. In other words, Muhammad's night journey should impact the lives of 1.5 billion Muslims all over the world five times each and every day. Glory to Allah who did take his servant for a journey by night from the sacred mosque to the farthest mosque whose precincts we did bless in order that we might show him some of our signs for he is one who heareth and seeth all things. Muhammad's alleged overnight trip covered the 766 miles from Mecca to Jerusalem trip to heaven and a return to Mecca and is described in part as follows. I was brought al Barak. I mounted it and came to the temple in Jerusalem, then tethered it to the ring used by the prophets. So Muhammad flew on al Barak to the temple in Jerusalem, tied it up to the ring the prophets had used, and went on in to the temple to pray. Because of the fantastic nature of Muhammad's claims, some Muslims suggest this was a vision or dream. But according to the most highly regarded historian of Islam, the sights which Allah's Apostle was shown on the night journey were actual sights, not dreams. Additionally, the rock enshrined in the Dome of the Rock on the Temple Mount is supposed to be where Muhammad and Barak launched from for the leg of the trip to heaven. So it would be untenable to suggest that Muhammad's journey was a dream or vision while at the same time claiming that he launched from a very much physical and tangible rock on the Temple Mount. There were many skeptics when Muhammad recounted the fantastic details of his trip the morning after his supposed night journey. As a result, many mo left Muhammad's religion. As Dr. Rafat Amari pointed out in the introduction to Islam in Light of History, Abu Bakr, first assistant of Muhammad who became his first caliph, confirmed Muhammad's description of the temple he had visited because Abu Bakr claimed he had once taken a journey to Jerusalem and had seen the temple himself and remembered it to be just as Muhammad had described it. There is, however, a little difficulty with their accounts. The temple had been torn down over 500 years before the claims of personal visits to it. Indeed, if Muhammad had actually hitched his flying animal outside the temple where, as he said, the prophets had hitched theirs, at the time that his night flight occurred, he would have found that the Temple Mount was being used as a garbage dump. Muslim's own Caliph Omar would have observed this when he marched into Jerusalem in 639 AD, not very many years after Muhammad had offered his account detailed above. While Muhammad and Bakr didn't need to be concerned about their largely illiterate followers traveling the 766 miles from Mecca to Jerusalem, to scrutinize their accounts, what excuse do today's Muslims have in this 21st century information age? As our ex-Muslim brethren at AnsweringIslam.org also inquire, in light of all this we ask the following questions. What temple did Muhammad visit, enter, and pray at before ascending to heaven? Seeing that the Quran mentions a journey to a mosque that did not exist during the lifetime of Muhammad, how can you consider the Koran to be 100% the Word of God? In light of the fact that both the Koran and the Islamic traditions contain this historical error, how can you trust either source to provide you with reliable information on the life of Muhammad and the first Muslims? Does not the fact that the Koran mentions a mosque which was only erected in A.D. 691 prove that there were Muslims who unashamedly and deceitfully added stories to the Quranic text and pass them off as revelation from God? You cannot find an answer to this historical problem within the Quran. Why do you still remain a Muslim? Indeed, when Muhammad's story is seen in the light of the history of Mecca video, in the second link attached to this video, what we learn is that every Muslim on earth bows toward and circumambulates the very same black stone moon god idol that the pagan star family worshippers bowed toward and circumambulated before Muhammad, and now we learn that the reason Muslims bow toward that black rock five times a day and wash before doing so is because Muhammad claimed to have taken a ride on a flying animal. 
the real reason Muslims pray five times a day and perform ablution is likely because Muhammad became deeply involved in the second century occult cult of the Sabians by way of four of his relatives. This cult apparently had so much influence over Muhammad's daily life that some in his own tribe referred to him as the Sabian. In the Quran, Muhammad lists Sabians right alongside Christians and Jews. Those who follow the Jewish scriptures and the Christians and the Sabians. And guess what? The Sabians prayed five times a day and performed ablution. Excerpt from Occultism in the Family of Muhammad by Dr. Rafa Amari. Waraka was one of the founders of the group called Hanaf. In the first narration of the life of Muhammad written by Ibn Hisham in the 8th century AD, we read, The Hanafa or Hanaf was a small group that started when four Sabians at Mecca agreed. Those four included Abdullah ben Jash. The four founders of Hanaf were all related to Muhammad. Abdullah ben Jash was a maternal cousin to Muhammad. Muhammad married his widow. All this reveals the close connection between Muhammad and the founders of the group. To our Muslim friends, the hour is growing late. You could die in the next five minutes. Are you prepared to meet our Creator and the eternal consequences of His judgment? Will you continue to reject all of the prophets and witnesses as revealed through the 1600-year record of God to mankind? to instead continue to follow the 23-year record of Muhammad, including his flying donkey mule, even though there is not a shred of historical or archaeological evidence that suggests that Mecca ever existed before the 4th century, or that the Kaaba existed before the early 5th century AD? Please click on the first link for discussion in the Islam Christian Forum. The second link for the video History of Mecca third link for the text version and a printable foldable PDF tract of this subject, the fourth link for an introduction to the gospel, the fifth link for a few of Dr. Rafa Amari's papers, the sixth link for the above that was quoted from answeringislam.org. May God bless you and guide you to the truth. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me.